Welcome to another Witcher lore video. I was considering what video to make today when I saw this suggestion from this user and I thought that this actually seemed like quite a fun video to make as not only has it been quite some time since I last made a video on a specific character in the Witch universe but this character is also really interesting. So I've decided to make today's video on Dorigare. To begin with, I imagine those of you who have just played the Witcher games will probably not know much about this character or you may not even have heard of him before. So, very basically, Dorigare is a mage who is an avid defender of endangered species. There is a few examples of this in Geralt's first meeting with this mage, in the story known as the Bounds of Reason and this is the story about the hunt for the legendary golden dragon villain Tretinmurth, Dorigare happened to encounter the Witcher along with his company and then sat down to drink with them. During this encounter, he questioned Geralt on a recent contract he had heard the Witcher had completed. This contract involved Geralt killing a basilisk. He asked him if he had killed this endangered creature for pleasure or for pay. This is the first indication of how Dorigare's views are. Later on, Gillen Steern, who Geralt later met on this hunt, told the Witcher that Dorigare actually believed all creatures, that includes animals and monsters, were good. For example, Dorigare would not consider a manticore that killed an entire village of peasants bad. Later on in this story, Dorigare directly tells Geralt that he does not like him, for he believes that to pursue a profession based on murder is not only stupid but also disgusting. He then goes more into his reasoning behind why he believes that endangered species should not be hunted to extinction no matter how dangerous they are. This reasoning goes as follows. The world hangs in balance and the absence of equilibrium can lead to extinction, and thus the end of the world. Basically, killing all monsters will have a knock-on effect in nature that is unpredictable and could lead to the extinction of all beings. Dorigare is effectively referring to the concept of a food chain. If you remove a predator or prey from a food chain, it can lead to imbalances in the ecosystem. Dorigare even goes as far as to say that he believes that dragons are not the natural predator slash enemy of man. This discussion was prompted by Yennefer claiming that they were. He retorts to Yennefer after she says that she believes they are, that he believes there are also plenty of other examples of predators more powerful than man, for example manticores. Yennefer's argument to this is that a single dragon could burn the cities and homes of humans, whereas manticores and other beings are more easily kept out. In response to this statement, Dorigare states that by that logic, lice and filth are the true enemies of man, as illness is also able to break through into the homes of man and can be just as destructive as dragon fire. This argument also reveals to us that this mage is not above petty insults as he does later insinuate that based on her beliefs, Yennefer would be more suited to breeding than taking part in debates. This insult is bad on a few levels, the first implying she's stupid, the second implies that as a woman she should be having children instead of trying to argue with him, and the third because he knows full well she is infertile and cannot have children. So despite the fact he wants to save animals and all the rest, he's clearly not that nice of a person. He is not all bad though, as later on he does actually attempt to save Geralt's life, despite not really liking him. I won't get fully into the situation, but during the hunt for the golden dragon, there was a landslide and Dorigare tried his best to help save Geralt, and this was when the very path Geralt walked on began to collapse. Later on in the hunt for the golden dragon, as I'm sure you've guessed, Dorigare was very much against killing it. This was once they discovered that it was actually a golden dragon. Initially, most members of the hunting party simply thought it was a more common form of dragon, and Dorigare was obviously against killing it, assuming it was a common dragon as well, but upon discovering Discovering it was a golden dragon, he was very much opposed to killing it, and in fact told all the other members of the hunt to go home. Just to clarify, there was rumours of a golden dragon, but no one really believed them, especially people that had heard of these monsters such as Geralt and Dorigare, as they knew how rare and even possibly non-existent they were. I won't say everything that happens to Dorigare on this hunt, as that'll make the video pretty long, but long story short, he was eventually tied up and even fainted, leaving him absent for the rest of the story. Story. This mage does appear later in the books, and this is in the book Time of Contempt. He was present for the Thanid coup. Before the actual coup, he did have an interaction with Geralt, where he pointed out all the various items of clothing other mages were wearing. He made his disdain clear to them, as most of their clothing was made from the fur or hide of endangered and or extinct monsters, as well as the hide or fur of endangered and or extinct animals. 
He actually had a brief clash with Philippa Eilhart over her choice of clothing, as some of her embroideries were created from the fur of a diamond ermine, and this is a creature that had gone extinct 30 years earlier. Geralt was pulled away from his conversation with Dorigaray by Philippa, who then stated to him that Dorigaray was a spy for the King of Sidaris, and this king is known as Ethane. She then also said that he was using the talk about fur and hide to prelude to an interrogation. So effectively to lure Geralt into a false sense of security, to then actually ask him questions that he could report back to the king. During the actual Thanid coup, Dorigray was shot in the back by a Scoia'tael archer. He did survive this encounter, thanks to Geralt and Marty Sodegreen, and then he eventually went on to become the rector of Bannard Academy, and this was after Gerhardt died at the Thanid coup. It is not known whether this next piece of information happened before or after the coup, but Dorigray has also been mentioned to have made a lecture on a feat Yennefer accomplished during the hunt for the Golden Dragon. Dragon. Whilst tied up with the Witcher, the Bard and the Sorceress, he witnessed Yennefer cast a spell using her leg. He discussed how this feat was possible, and it led to students attempting to imitate this feat. And I actually discussed this story in full on I believe it was my Bannard Academy video. Just one note that I forgot to clarify is that Dorigaray did know Yennefer before meeting Geralt, as when he first meets Geralt and the Witcher tells him that Yennefer was spotted in the area, Dorigaray is seen to be worried about her presence, as I suppose that he knows what she's like and she would not shy away from simply just killing a dragon. And just as a little bit of information that I just want to clarify about this character, just so none of you are unsure, to begin with, this character is a human male. So he's not an elf or anything else, he is a Nordling human male. And he is thought to be from Sidaris. He also does, at least in a way, appear in the Witcher games, and this is in the wedding mod for the Witcher 1. It's an add-on that's pretty well made all in all, and it does actually have Dorigare in there. This is not canon, but technically he has been in the Witcher games in a way. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And just as a little bit of interesting, I suppose you could call it kind of trivia, is that Dorigare does actually also not only appear in the Witcher books, Time of Contempt and the Sword of Destiny, but he also appears in the fifth Witcher comic, The Bounds of Reason. And this is a comic based on the short story The Bounds of Reason, which as I said before is the hunt for the golden dragon story. I just thought that was a little bit of interesting information just to know. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's Witcher lore video. This has been a really fun one to make. I just wanted to tell you all that I have actually got a lot more to do at the moment, so I'm going to be decreasing the videos to only two a week, one Witcher lore video and one Witcher playthrough part. I guess that means I won't be spamming your subscriptions or anything, and also it makes the videos a bit more special, but I simply have too much to do to be able to fit any more in, as these videos do take quite a long time to make. So I'm sorry for those of you that love the Elder Scrolls or Middle-earth lore, but I'm gonna have to put a stop to that. Just for now, I may be able to pick it back up in, say, maybe July or something like that, and I probably will, so we'll see how that all goes anyway. But I will try my best to continue making the Witcher parts and the Witcher lore videos. As always, if you've enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate you liking it, as it genuinely does help out the channel so much. These videos take me a long time to make, and just liking the video is just amazing, so I just want to say thank you to every single one of you that does that. Also, if this is the first video you find on my channel, be sure to subscribe. I do Witcher lore videos every week, I do Witcher playthrough parts, so if you want to make sure you don't miss videos like this, or if you want to watch the playthrough and stuff like that, I'd recommend subscribing as then you'll get the videos in your subscription box. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter, I do updates on there whenever any new videos come out, I'll tell you guys stuff on there if anything important's happening. I didn't mention what happened today, as I knew I'd be saying it in this video, but say if I didn't get the opportunity to say it in a video, I would say it on Twitter. Also be sure to follow me on Twitch, I don't know when I'll be live streaming on there, as I said, I'm really busy at the moment, but if you follow me on there, at least you'll know when I do go live as you'll get a notification in your emails or potentially say on your phone. Also be sure to join the Reddit and Discord, there's loads of people in the Discord now, I think there's over 700 people or something like that now, it's crazy. So if you want to talk to people on there, be sure to join, there's a link in the description, and also be sure to join the Reddit, there's plenty of stuff you can do on there, just post stuff that's funny, I'll give it a look, and I'm sure other people in the Reddit will. I think we have about 60 members on there, it'd be cool if that could eventually get to like 100 or something, so thank you all for joining all these things, they're all in the description as usual, and you're all amazing for even doing one of these things. Finally guys, as always, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges, I just want to say thank you to every single one of you, as honestly, it's just so amazing what you do, you genuinely help me out so much, especially with months like January. I know it's technically February now, but it does take a while for the revenue to start to go back up and things, so the Patreon money is especially useful now. So I just want to say thank you to every single one of you on Patreon, as it's just genuinely helped me out so much. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, learned something new or just enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.